Hello everyone, Bastion here, and uh, today, well, in front of me, this is a fully functioning switch. Now, obviously, if you read the, read the uh, video is what we're going to do. We're not really doing anything to these, to this. What we're doing is replacing the shells of the Joy-Cons. Good old-fashioned shell replacement. So, what were, what were we changing them to? Well, I got this uh, little uh, these shells from Extreme Rate, whatever it is. I'll put the frickin' link in the thing. Because I can't remember the exact name of it, and I'll, put, and I'll show what it was. But I got these cool looking blue flames because I like being all the edgy, the edgy edgelord that I am when it comes to things. So we're going to be replace, replacing the regular ones with this, with these ones. And, yeah, look at those. It looks all cool with the splattered paint. So this kit comes with, well, obviously the Joy-Con sticks. I was going with a couple screwdrivers I'm not going to use because I already have my own screwdrivers. But it also comes with replacement screws. These buns you have to pop out. I'm just going to keep the original buns. I'm keep the screws for like later because I do, do need replacement screws or whatnot. But basically everything everything you need to replace it is in here. But I'm just focusing only on these. Because this is all I need. Mostly because I like the way the original buttons look. So. Huh. I guess I'm a... Said, oh, yeah. <laughs> they didn't come clean. I was originally gonna go with the atomic purple, but then I kept reading about how the screws were like kind of messed up on the right Joy-Con. I think it has a lot of a random masking tape, I believe. That's alright. And then I just found out these ones. I'm like, yeah, these look awesome. And these are. A lot smaller than I thought it was going to be. Everything. So, what we're going to be doing first is the left Joy-Con, then we'll do the right Joy-Con, because the left Joy-Con is a lot easier to do than the right Joy-Con. There's a reason for that, and you'll find out eventually. <laughs> Alright, so what you're going to need to, uh, to take apart this is a Tri-Wing screwdriver and a Phillips head screwdriver. And I highly recommend getting like in these type of uh, pliers, well, I guess you call them pliers, tweezers, because when you get inside here and with ribbon cables, it's gonna be easier to uh, get uh, get out. So let's go ahead and zoom in a bit because, like I said, these are small and delicate. All right, so to get apart, first off, it has four tri-wing screws in the very back. So it's zoomed in. <laughs> Too much zoomed in. There we go. So start by removing these. And we're going to try to keep everything organized form. Alright, so now that, that's done. We are going to... This should just pop right open. Like, there we go. Use a nail or a spudger. But it's right along here. And you want to be careful with this because you don't want to uh, break any of the ribbon cables while you're popping it open. So after we get that, just uh, slide you carefully open. Like I said, see those couple ribbon cables you want to be careful with right there. All right. So after we do that, we're going to get the uh, battery out. Oops, turned it on. You don't want to be on right now, battery, or console. Come on. Slide you up. And it just has like a little, it's just it held in there with adhesive. Like so. And of course it has, to get this out, you want to be careful because it's a very fragile connector, but right there, it's connected to the motherboard. So I'm going to take this spudger. 
Now you don't want to use uh, metal because that's a uh, very dangerous. Put to that side, especially on motherboards. Now we're stuck down to here. So this is the time you switch over to the uh, Phillips head, which should be small enough. There's three. There's three screws holding this in here. One right here, one right here, and one right here. Just a little boop. These ones are really, really tiny. <laughs> so be very careful. Because you don't want to lose these screws. I mean, obviously this kit came with like backup screws in case you needed it, but I don't. I'll try to, ow, hand stuck. Try to not need that. Then you're just going to uh, pull that up. Be very careful because there's a ribbon cable right here. Which we're going to uh, take these tweezers, lift you up, and slide you out, set you aside. And while we're here, we're going to uh, do the same thing with uh, the other ribbon cable holder, uh, locks, whatnot. And they all come in different areas, in different directions, like right here. Lift up there. This one is reverse. We're going to pop that one up and it should just slide right out there we go now then to uh, save some time we're going to take this actually just to make sure we don't like end up losing things I'm gonna take this and it already attached to the, to the other back which I'm really not too bothered by this this tape stuff but I think it'll have an effect especially with where this is but the rail the rail, it has one Phillips head screw right, screw right here. It's going to take you out. See how tiny these screws are? Like, so very tiny. Put you right here just so, because I'm right going to be right here. And then this should just pop out like that. Be careful because the uh, locking button will, pro will probably pop out as well. Did this thing just, like, go off? Huh, it did. <laughs> Then we're going to take uh, the button, and this is the locking button for the rail. And these only go in one way, which is kind of hard to see because of uh, how dark it is. But they only do they do only go in one way. And there's like a little tab that you have to. Uh, Put in, you can see it like right there. And how you know these lined up? You see this little gray thing right here? That's gonna be where the locking mechanism is. So you just stick that on there. Take this uh, extremely tiny screw. And make sure you almost drop it because that's very important. So after dropping the screw, make sure you don't drop it again in there, and then screw you right in. So now, that, now that's done, we're going to worry about the trigger. Now, these are a pain to get out, and even more pain to get back in there, because there are little plastic tabs that you have to decompress to actually pop it out. And when you do pop it out, you have to be wor wary of the uh, springs that are in here. There we go. See, so you see these little plastic tabs right here are the hardest parts. And it had two springs, like one spring already fell out, but the springs go on like these little divots right there and right there. But yeah, it's so hard to get out because if you see right here, like how these tabs are. So there's the bun assembly. So same thing, what we're going to do, where to put it, it's right here. I take this, we're going to attach this already to this and then put the trigger back on there just to uh, get that out of the way so they don't end up losing stuff all over the place. 
So only thing holding this in is a single Phillips head screw. It's itty bitty. So we'll set that right there, keep that. And then we'll just uh, pull you out. Set you aside. Take you. And lay you back into place. Has a little lead on there to like uh, get it back into place. I'll just take you and screw you back in. Like so. Alright. Then we'll, we shall take these springs and launch them across everywhere because I can't grab well. Set those back in place. And now here's the hard part. So you have the, the trigger has little tabs here. Boom, boom. That we have to both get on the springs before we click it back into place. Which it is on there, so. This is probably the second hardest part about doing this. The, fir the first hardest part is uh, doing the... There we go. Still clicks. Perfect. Is doing the uh, freaking right <laughs> one. All right. Now that that's done, set that aside. And back to the main board. Also, sorry for like all the random color correction. I have the camera set to auto, and I, I really don't have everything set up correctly for this. Or like actual color correction, so it might, might turn like orange randomly. But whatever. Okay. On to the main board. So we're going to pop the uh, thumbstick out next. First. This uh, ribbon cable to get out of the way because there's a screw under it that holds uh, there, so just uh, pop you out. There it goes. Pop that up. Slide you out. We'll do the same thing for uh, this one. Pop you out, and then my pliers seem to be bent so they don't have much grip anymore. There we go. Slide you out. Now then. We're going to hold this ribbon cable up because it's in the way. And we're going to take a U. Once again, Phillips head. Like literally only the white, the tri-wing head is only for the outside. The rest is just Phillips head inside. So I'll just uh, slide you out. Which is, has this little buffer thing that we're going to also place into the, to the other one. But we won't take that out until we actually get the rest of the board out. We have that out now. Woo. So we're going to set you aside because I can't, I'm not going to start putting anything into the other board until everything else is disconnected. And we're going to do, like slide this, uh, what button is this one? L button. I always forget which ones that these ones are. The L button we're going to slide out. It has a little spring on there. You'll notice it's like, boop. It's like cracks in there and like rotates. Nice design. <laughs> Set you aside. Then we're going to get this stuff out. And we're going to put this one into the uh, new casing right away. But this top part right here is all one part. So like, I guess just, that shows it pretty well. And take out the uh, uh, select button with a little rubber thing. Shall take you. And once again, same as the uh, original or the other one or anything with anything Nintendo. It only goes in one way, which doesn't really matter because it's a select button. It can only go in one way anyway. And then we'll take the little plastic covering and slip, slip you right back there as well. Like so. Then I shall take uh, 
this. Sort of line you back up and just put you or screw you back into place and we'll finish tearing down it. We're pretty much almost done with the left one. Literally just have to pull out the board, put the put the buttons in the other uh, half of the shell. And then basically seal it back up. And then we'll be done with the easy part. <laughs> right, there we go. I'll, I'll put this back in after I get the rest of it undone. So, now the board has two screws holding it in. One right here. And one right here. Now you see, you see, may see me like throwing the screws down here, but that's just because I'm like doing this gun really, switch, be switching them out really fast. So we're gonna slide you, and we could disconnect the rumble motor, but we're not going to. It just saves some uh, time just to pull it out and then put it back in the other one. But like that just slides off like that. Boom. And that's... I forgot, the button, buttons fall out. So we have these buttons all come out, including that. Eh. And plastic. Not plastic. <sighs> I just rubber, I don't want to call it. All right, let's deal with it in a second. So, here we have the buttons. The, bu the buttons can only go in one way due to like the plastic mold molding on them. So we're gonna put all the buttons in there, then we're going to uh, put all the membranes on there. Now you do wanna make sure you have the membranes facing the correct way when you do this. So it looks like that. Now where the, there you are. I'm just gonna take you off. And set you into here, just in case. I think that's like a kind of like a dust cover-ish thing. But it has these little tabs that just like lead it so it goes into place like so. All right, now we should reassemble it. So motherboard. Goes in here, this goes in here. And if you remember, the screws go right here and up here by the uh, port for the thumbstick. Thumbstick goes in like so. So it just pops right in there. Now we'll take these uh, two screws, screw it back in. If I can get the things to rotate correctly, there we go. Okay, then we'll uh, reattach the ribbon cables. Make sure the things are up. This one's not, there we go. Next is the battery cover. Actually, I lied. That's gonna go on last. Do the rail fart, fart, pff, rail part first, so that way we can reconnect the uh, ribbon cables first. Which will probably be a bit difficult. All right, there we go. That's a bit tedious trying to do, especially at this angle. Alright, next we'll get the uh, uh, L button in. Yeah, that's, where, that's what it is. Which, if you remember, this little spring goes right in this little thing right here. Just pop that in, or 
slide that in. There we go. Has a nice little click to it. All right. And the final thing. Now that I'm thinking, I probably should have put this on first, but oh well. <laughs> Take this ribbon cable. And remember, it goes right there. It already has like a a bend in it, so you gotta make sure you line that up right. Just goes right in there. All right. So I'll put the battery sh oh, shell. Right back in there. Next remember this has three screws, one right here, two right there. Sorry, one right there, two right there, that way you can see and realize it was out of focus. There we go. Better can just slide right on there. Just turn you over. Make sure it slides into place and there we go. Buns all are clicky. Now then, back over to the. I'm just going to screw in only a few just to make sure that it actually still works properly. All right, let me just go ahead and double check this. Control buttons. All right. Um, back. Where is the troll stick? Still works. All right. So left one is fully done, which is good. And look at that. It looks slick. <laughs> All right. Set you off to the side. Don't need you anymore. And the mic's off me. Oops.